Hello, good morning, fathers, mothers, brothers and sisters in Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are and you've tuned in this morning watching me, my name is Pastor Kilimoe Mazino, Pastor Zino for short, of Ruach Ministries of the Purple Center Church, and I'll be taking you on this week's devotion. This devotion is brought to you courtesy of the Ruach Leadership Institute. Let's go straight into God's Word this morning. Um, I want to read from 2 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1 to verse 8. 2 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1 to verse 8. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that it may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Verse 5. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Verse 7. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Verse 8 says, Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Now this week, we are starting on this very beautiful Monday morning. And the word, word this morning is to look at some instructions, some charges. We're starting with just one today, that the Apostle Paul gave to his son, his spiritual son, Timothy. Now, from 1 Timothy to 2 Timothy, if you are a Bible student or you read the Bible, you discover there are many instructions. Timothy was a pastor of a church, was a strong believer, his son to Apostle Paul. Paul gave Timothy a lot of instructions all through the book of 1 and 2 Timothy. But for the purpose of this devotion, this morning, we just want to pick one instruction, just a word for you to run with this morning and this week. And I think it's a very powerful word. It can be overlooked from all what I've read. We don't have time to go through everything. So I'm going to just look at one word, one instruction he gave to us, Timothy. And that instruction is in verse 7. He said, Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. What does it mean to consider? It means to appraise. It means to scrutinize. It means to ponder. It means to examine. It means to look upon, to think about more carefully and thoroughly. As you start your week this morning, the question I will ask you is where are you going? What do you want to do? Ladies and gentlemen, I think one of the problems we have as believers, as children of God, is that we don't do our praises. We stand up in the morning, we take off, but have you considered, have you sat down to look upon, to thoroughly think? Paul said to Timothy, consider what I'm saying. He said some things. Number one, there were three things, three figures. Of, of, of speech they used there. Number one, he talked about 
him as a soldier. He said, as a soldier, no man that wore it entangled himself with the affairs of this life. Verse 4. Consider that. Don't just wake up this morning and run off and dash off. Yes, you're going to work. But have you asked yourself some pertinent questions? Have you taken an appraiser? Why didn't that business work last week? Why didn't that door open last week? Why didn't things work out the way I wanted them to work out last week? I want you to know that in life, things work. It is not about whether things work or not. There are a lot of people that are jack of all trades and master of none. People run, if you go out to the street this morning, you will see people are already driving out. As early as the coffee is lifted at 4 a.m., there are cars, there are people walking. The question is, a lot of them may return home in the evening unsatisfied, dissatisfied. A lot of them will return home in the evening depressed. A lot of them will return home in the evening empty-handed. And the problem could just be because they have not sat down to consider, to think thoroughly. I'm going to work. This work I'm doing, how does it fit into the scheme, the purpose of God for my life? This business I want to venture in, this deal I want to do, this opportunity that has been brought to me, how does it work? I remember some years ago, somebody, a lady brought us a very good deal. The way she put that thing, in fact, we didn't think, we didn't consider, we invested money into it. Only to discover that it's not exactly the way she has put it. In fact, she told me, you know, you don't need to do anything. You, all you need to do is just, just enter under me and do this. You don't need to work. Just hearing that, okay, you don't need to do this. You don't need to do that. It's fine. I will make sure I do this. But it was just words to convince us to buy into that business. And I put the money there. Well, I wouldn't say it was a hundred percent loss, but honestly, it was not exactly the way she was putting it. Maybe if we had sat down and considered it a little more, just a little more, maybe we would have discovered that it was not exactly what she was saying and pulled back at the right time. Paul said, as a child of God, you are a soldier. And one of the things you can't do is to entangle yourself with the affairs of life. Think about it. You are in life. This is life you are in. If you are hearing me this morning, it means you are alive. If you are watching me on that screen this morning, you are alive. But Paul is saying, if you want to be a good soldier, no good soldier entangles himself with the affairs of life. Sit down and consider what Paul is saying. It means if you want to be effective in what you are doing, there are things you can't carry along with you. There are things you can't find yourself doing. There are things you can't entertain or get involved in. A lot of people want things to work, but they are involved in things that makes those same things not to work for them. Paul said, consider. Take an appraiser. Are there people I'm carrying along with me that is making this thing not to work for me? The second figure he gave there was the figure, the picture of an athlete. He said that everyone that strives for masteries, yet that one is not crowned except he strives lawfully. 
I said to you some few seconds ago or minutes ago that things work. There is a woman who has sold tomato and has built a house out of it. <laughs> there is a man who has sold water and has built a powerful business out of it. You know what? You can't just run. Don't wake up this Monday morning and just run. Do you know how to strive lawfully in that field you are in? You will never get the crown. You will never get the breakthrough except you are doing it right. A cousin of mine some years ago just went because he had money, bought two trailers and wanted to go into the transport business. The trailers packed up. He was in debt. Why? Because if you enter into a field you know nothing about, you've set yourself up to fail. He says, and as, as an athlete, you will never get the crown except you strive lawfully. Are you doing it lawfully? Do you know the in and out of what you are practicing, of that business you want to go into, of this life you're living? Listen, this life we are living has rules. Things don't just happen. There are principles and laws you have to follow. You have to discover them. You have to discover them from the Word of God. You have to discover them by reading, by increasing in knowledge. The third figure, the third picture he gave there is that of a farmer. You can't just throw seeds anywhere. Some of us have thrown seeds everywhere. The farmer waits for the right season. A farmer who expects an Harvest, wait for the right seed. Remember the Bible says, there is time for everything. Consideration involves knowing the rules and applying them. If you see them to ponder, you will gain understanding. Because he said, consider what I say and the Lord give the understanding in all things. Sometimes because we don't see them to consider things, we lack the understanding of how to operate in life. As we try to round up, there are a few things we must consider. Though not written here, consider the brevity of life. Life is short. Consider, the Bible talks about us considering Jesus who suffered such contradiction. Consider that even if I failed last week, I can still go ahead and succeed this week. Consider what God is saying to you this morning. That you don't just wake up and run heter scatter. Sit down and ask yourself, am I doing what God wants me to do? Because somebody said, no matter the speed you are taking on the wrong road, Rot on the wrong road, you will never get to your destination. It doesn't matter how fast you're driving. If you want to head now to Mombasa and your vehicle is facing Nakuru, no matter the speed, you will never get to Mombasa. This morning, the watchword for you is consider. Sit down, ponder. Take an appraiser. Look at it again. What am I doing wrong? What did I do right? Because it's not always about the wrong. What did I do right last week? Why did this thing work? Sit down and put it down so that life can be better. God doesn't want us to struggle. He wants us at the center of his will. Have you discovered your purpose yet? Consider it. This hustle I'm doing, is that what I should be doing? Consider it. Is there a call of God upon my life? Consider it. This trip you want to take, is that what God wants you to do? Sit down and consider it. That relationship you want to enter into, or you're already in, is, that, is it helping your life? Sit down and consider it. Consider it. If you will consider it, if you will sit down and think about it, 
The scripture says, God will give you understanding in all things. Don't just run at a scatter this morning. Consider what the word of God says. And I believe life will be better for you. This morning I want to pray for you. Now God will give you the grace to not just wake up and run, but to sit down and think and ponder and appraise. Remember the prodigal son in Luke 15? He sat down and considered his situation. That was the beginning of the turnaround of his life. He said, my father has servants and they are doing well. Why is my life like this? The Bible says he came to himself. He considered, he appraised his situation. And he made the right decision that brought a change in his life. I pray for you this morning the grace to sit down and reevaluate that step you are about to take, that step you've already taken, that step you are not even willing to take, to look at it again. I pray that God releases on you this morning. And I pray that understanding will come, the light will shine any, in any gray area, any area that is not clear yet, may God give you understanding that your day-to-day -day will be productive, that you will not be among those returning home feeling depressed. May God bless you. Father, thank you for your sons and your daughters. I release the grace to consider the instruction that I've come for this morning that there will be a change in their life. I speak that you will have a fruitful day. The hand of God will be upon you. Understanding is your portion. Light shines in every dark area. And you are blessed in the center of God's will. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. I will see you tomorrow again. <music>